Hello and happy Monday, everyone. Uh, today uh, we start uh, doing the next uh, week's work. So uh, today we're going to start uh, in by reading chapter one of our Kagan Three Cultures book. Um, chapter one uh, introduces you to the idea that there are three academic cultures, uh, the natural sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities, uh, and talks about the reasons that we uh, classify uh, our, our work into these three sort of academic cultures, and then uh, what the ways are that we can use uh, to communicate uh, our different ways of knowing across fields. Um, there are a couple of uh, really good spots in here that uh, get to the meat of the argument. Uh, one is this table here on pages four and five. Uh, so this talks about the uh, the dimensions of comparisons of the three cultures uh, and it compares them on the basis of primary interests on primary sources of evidence, on vocabulary, on the influence of historical conditions, on ethical evidence, on dependence on outside support, on working conditions, on the contribution to the national economy, um, and on criteria for beauty. Um, and those might not all be things that you would automatically think of when you're thinking of academic work. Uh, but they're all considerations that lead to different interpretations uh, as you as you go along in academic work. So uh, one of the uh, one of the writing assignments that I'm looking forward to seeing from you this week uh, is your reaction to chapter one's reading. Um, secondly, uh, we've got the uh, resume that we're working on this week. So if I pull up the syllabus schedule, right? We're working on basic resumes. Uh, this is lecture two that you're witnessing right now, and then uh, looking at chapter one. So the reason I distinguish resumes from basic resumes uh, is that there are two types of resume that I'm wanting uh, that I want to make you familiar with. Um, there's one that you would call the scannable resume. Uh, that is a resume that is intended uh, to be used when you're applying to an online job or a job that's posted online or uh, a job for which there are multiple uh, electronic submissions. Uh, and you use the scannable format for your resume um, in order to... Uh, adapt it to the best ability of the machine that will be uh, scanning your resume. Um, and that machine will be a gatekeeper before you ever get to see a human with your resume. That machine will say whether or not you are qualified. So it's it pays to uh, spend some time developing a resume that is friendly to that machine. Um, the second type of resume that I'll talk with you about in this lecture video uh, is the creative resume or personal resume. Um, the easy way to remember this is a personal resume is a resume that you hand to a person. Um, unless you're handing your resume directly to a person for a job, you, will, you should use a scannable resume. Um, so the personal resume might be more common uh, around here in Fargo uh, where you're going directly into the business and uh, you're giving your resume to a, uh, a hiring manager or even a general manager. Um, that's the kind of resume that you'll be giving them. And generally, the personal resumes are characterized by some sort of creative effort, uh, some sort of effort at document design to make them look pretty, um, something that makes them visually interesting, uh, and uh, Either resume uh, should be no more than two pages, uh, shooting for one page if you can. Uh, so we're going to look at a couple of examples, and these are available on Blackboard. So I have the Joe Snuffy basic resume here. Uh, Joe Snuffy is an amalgam of several students I've had over the years. Um, so Joe Snuffy is applying 
uh, for a business job. Uh, and it's important that you adapt your resume each time uh, for uh, the job that you're applying to, right? You don't want to be applying to several jobs with the same resume, okay? Um, because different jobs require different things. So uh, as we go along, we see that this looks pr like a pretty standard resume, but you'll notice that on the places where you might normally have bullets, there are no bullets. There is no line between the header and the first subheader, right? Uh, everything is a character on the keyboard that a machine will recognize. And this is by design. Um, as, you're, as you're writing for machines, uh, I'm sure some of you have tried to uh, reformat a document from one program to another, uh, and often what you find is uh, any non-standard um, characters that you have in that document uh, tend to throw the machine a little bit, and you get these little empty squares, or you get wingdings, or you get... Uh, something that doesn't make much sense. So the same thing is true with these scanners. Uh, when you add in bullets on the on the end of these, uh, or you add in lines that are extraneous formatting that may look good, right, and it may be visually pleasing, um, but you'll find that it will throw the machines for a loop sometime. Uh, and so uh, the machine will have more trouble reading your resume than if you had just done it uh, like this with uh, some very good uh, contrast between the headers, the subheaders, and the sub-subheaders, right? But then also just leaving out anything that's not a standard key on the keyboard. Um, now you'll see that Joe Snuffy has left out the objective. Uh, we assume usually that the objective is to get a job. Uh, and so if, uh, if you have an objective on there, that's fine. Um, but make sure that it makes sense uh, with the job that you're applying for. Um, most employers are not going to want to hear that your objective is to have a job for two years while you finish your degree. Uh, they would prefer that you, you know, stay on for a long time because it costs money to train you. And once you're good, they want to keep you, right? So um, objectives are, are a little weird for me, personally. Um, he does uh, list his education because that's his strong point, right? His, his uh, BA in Business Administration is coming right along. He next lists his work experience. Uh, he's got Doolittle's Woodfire Grill, team member at Masters of Success, TNT Kids Fitness Instructor, uh, Caribou Coffee, uh, and then professional skills. He lists Microsoft Office Suite, presentations at Toastmasters, and strong ability to multitask in chaotic environments. Now, the resume that he has put together um, definitely denotes somebody who can handle those kinds of uh, high-stress situations. Uh, the servers, the working with kids, um, uh, all, of the, all of the things that he put on there uh, lend themselves to some th someone that I would want to begin thinking about training as a manager. Um, and with the business administration bachelor's degree on there, uh, I can see that that's what he's working toward. Um, so later when we pair that with a cover letter, it'll become more clear how to craft that narrative uh, to make sure that each of the jobs that you have listed makes sense uh, in your resume and in, in that narrative that you're uh, creating for the uh, potential employer. Um, so if the basic resume is rather boring, you'll find that the creative resume is often not. So this is one audience-specific creative resume. Um, and you'll find, if you're familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, that it looks very much like a Dungeons & Dragons character sheet. Um, this is because the uh, student who was applying to this job uh, was a fan of Dungeons & Dragons and wanted to show that to his potential employer, who was a comic book store. Um, and so... By taking advantage of the format of the Dungeons & Dragons character sheet, uh, this student has 
uh, developed a resume that is both unique uh, and shows a great mastery of the kinds of skills that are important to that employer. You see down here, uh, he's, he's listed fandoms. He talks about the games he's familiar with, features and traits, right? So that's who he is as a person. He's got his education here, along with some basic coursework information. Uh, he personally rated his own strengths here on the side, where you would expect to see uh, skills, uh, contact information over here, and then some creative use of the form uh, as it sits for a, uh, for a Dungeons & Dragons character sheet. So that's just one way of thinking about how you would design a creative resume for uh, a potential employer. Now, not everybody is going to have something readily available that's that pertinent. Uh, and 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 stands in that well, uh, but the more creative you can be, uh, the more the more uh, the the better your resume will end up looking, right? Um, and think about things like color, line, texture, shape, and space uh, as you're thinking about uh, how to organize your resume, um, your creative resume. Uh, you won't be turning in a creative resume to me. Um, or a personal resume, as the case may be, you will be turning in just a resume and a cover letter. Uh, so the resume and cover letter uh, should probably be the scannable versions, just so you get some practice with that. Um, more and more often, what you're going to find is that as you're looking on the job market, the job ads are going to um, be going through uh, third-party screeners, and these third-party screeners will largely be electronic. Um, and if you uh, don't believe me, I have something to show you here. Uh, oh, but I don't have internet access right now. So, um, if you type in uh, Indeed, right? Indeed is a job search engine. And then commercial uh, screening questions or screener questions, you will find a 30-second ad where they've advertised to potential employers um, that they will set up screener questions that screen out candidates who are unqualified. Now what that is is an electronic screening of your resume. So as you submit your resume uh, to the electronic uh, scanner, that scanner will check for specific words, keywords, that you have used in your resume in order to determine whether or not you're qualified. Now I have a good story with this. Uh, I was finishing up my, or I had just finished up my master's degree and I applied uh, to work in the copy shop in a affiliated college to my own college, thinking I would use that as a gap year and, and sort of apply to programs. Well, uh, when I applied to the copy shop, uh, I didn't make it to the first round of interviews and they told me it was because I was unqualified. So I called and I asked because, you know, I'd made copies before as a master's student. Um, and the guy said, well, you didn't list it on your resume. The uh, job ad said you needed to have experience with high-speed copiers. And I said, well, that's something that you could infer, right? But the electronic scanners had not inferred because it wasn't listed on my resume. So that's something that you have to think about. Uh, as you are designing your resumes, make sure that you are looking directly at the job ad. If there's specific terminology that they use uh, for a specific field or a specific skill, make sure that if you have that skill, you list it in the way that they do, right? You will be copying the language that is used in that job ad in order to uh, make sure that the screener uh, the machine screener uh, sees that you're qualified for things that you're qualified for, right? Especially when it lists those required um, skills. If it's a required skill, then make sure that somewhere on your resume it is listed exactly as it's listed in the job ad. Uh, this will help to ensure that you get past those electronic screeners. Now, you, you may not think that uh, Chapter 1 in Kagan is directly related 
to the uh, resume and cover letter. But if you think about it, it's the same thing. Uh, because chapter one is all about talking about how we classify our academic discourse. Um, so whether you're a, uh, a psychologist who is a social scientist, or you're uh, an English student who is a humanist, or you're a biologist who is a natural scientist, you have a different terminology in each of those fields. And when you're getting access to those fields, you have to show that you're cognizant of the vocabulary that's being used. And that's exactly what you're doing on the resume. You're showing that you know exactly the terms that they use for these job skills. Uh, so that when they ask you, can you write a budget report? Can you uh, write a grant? Can you uh, do this office task that we would like you to do? They know that you'll be able to do it based on your use of the vocabulary that's kind of an insider vocabulary. Uh, so that's why you should always, if you know the vocabulary, make sure you're using it. Yeah. Um, so uh, that is the lecture video for this week. Um, so at the end of this week, you, or at the end of uh, this week, you will find that there is nothing due except your daily writing. Uh, for your daily writing, I would like you to uh, read over uh, chapter one and respond to chapter one in one of your daily writing prompts. I would like you to respond to this lecture uh, in one of your daily writing prompts. And then I would like you to begin drafting your uh, resume and send me a drafty draft of that resume. Uh, that is something that I can give you some feedback on. Um, I may be a little later in the week uh, giving you feedback this week uh, as I'll be traveling, but I will have my phone on me and that's generally how I answer my emails. Uh, so please, um, as you work this week, uh, send me those um, writing prompts. Uh, you can wait till the end of the week to send them if you'd like. Um, but the more time you give me to respond to that drafty draft of your resume, the more feedback I can give you um, and uh, that will that will help you in the long run uh, when you're creating your resumes. Uh, I would also like you to find a job ad for your resume to respond to uh, so that you're not just sort of stabbing in the dark with a general resume. I would like the resume to be tailored specifically to a job ad. Uh, so please include that job ad with your drafty draft of your resume. All right. Um, you, can you can send it as a screenshot of the job ad. Um, or uh, you can print it as a PDF and email it that way. Um, you can copy and paste the text of the job ad into a Word document and send it that way. Um, any way you send it to me is fine as long as I get it and I can see it. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, I've, I've been pretty good so far about uh, email. If I've gotten an email from you, I think I've responded within 24 hours. And I hope that I can continue that uh, throughout the uh, throughout the semester. Uh, otherwise, um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, so that's the end of this. Uh, have a good night, or good day, or good week, or all of those things. All right. Bye.